And I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender and all I am is yours. Come on, saints, help me worship him this morning. And I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrender in all I am is yours and I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all and I'll stand my soul Lord to you surrender in all I am Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we prepare our hearts to go into the Word of God on today, minister to your people. Being past Amy, we join our faith together that your Word would strengthen the faith of your people. Those who are believing you for answer to their prayers, let this Word encourage them that they will get an answer, God. Let their faith be strengthened. Let their faith be encouraged this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High God. And listen, what I want to encourage you on this morning is pray until the answer comes. Because we do serve a God who hears and answers prayer. God is not playing around with your emotions when he said he will answer prayer. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, he said, call unto me and I will answer you. That's a guarantee. God said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. We all get a little tired and worn out sometimes waiting on the answer to those prayers. But listen, you you just need to be encouraged. You need to know that God knows what's best for you. Are you listening to me? It's either yes, no, or not yet. And not yet is not a no. Not yet simply means the time is not right. Are you listening to me? Psalms chapter 102 says, God will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. The set time is come. So there's a set time where God answers your prayer, where he does what you are asking him to do. That's what the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says. There's a time and a purpose to everything under the heaven. Do you know there is a time for your prayer to be answered? Watch this. Let's go into the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. And the Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward. You, you, I, did, did you hear that? Verse 4 says, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her less by her continual coming, she weary me. Now, Jesus is giving this parable, and the whole purpose of him giving this parable is to encourage you and me that as we pray, 
we must believe God and not be quick to give up, not be quick to throw the towel in. God is not Wendy's or McDonald's drive through where you just pull up and you put in the order and by the time you get to the window, some of you getting mad if you got to wait five minutes. Come on, somebody. God is not your, he's not your drive through Come on, somebody. He is God. He knows what's best for you. And sometimes God waits because our hearts are not right. We are not ready for that prayer to be answered. I know me and Pastor Amy, we used to be praying years ago, oh, give us a breakthrough in the ministry. And you know, God finally gave us a breakthrough. But when we look back on our life and see the, and see the wisdom that we had when we were asking God to give us a breakthrough, we rejoice that he did not give us the breakthrough because we would not have had the wisdom to maintain or sustain what God was wanting to do in and through our lives. So God knows what's best for you. Sometimes God has to equip you by educating you and preparing you for those answered prayer. Some of you praying for a house, and if God give you a house, how are you gonna pay? How are you gonna pay the bill next month? How are you gonna pay the bill the month after that? Come on, somebody. So God, you praying for a house. So God is working on getting you a job, getting you upgraded, getting you a raise so that when you get the house, you'd be able to afford the payments. Come on, man. Come on, saints. God ain't crazy. He's going to give you a house and then in three months, the thing is repossessed from you. You see what I, you, do you see where I'm coming from? Look, this is not magic. This is not gimmicks or tricks. God is a wise God. He wants you to keep what he gives to you. Are you listening to me? And we know sometimes there are extraordinary circumstances where God overrides everything. And he can give you a house that's paid for. So you won't have to worry about monthly payments. And he has done that for, for many of his people. Are you listening to me? Listen to this. So he spoke this parable to them to this end that men are always to pray and not to faint. And he said... There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. It's always a woman, right? <laughs> Glory to God. These women get faith. Us men too. Don't sleep on us. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. In other words, I need you to settle this. I, I've been taken advantage of. I have this adversary who's giving me problems. I need you to settle it. I need you to put him in check. I need you to rule in my favor. And guess what the Bible says? He would not for a while, for a while, for a while. That means she, she, there was a waiting period for this woman. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her what? Continual coming. She was there the same time every day, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., on the dot. He can see in the distance. Oh, dear God, not her again. Oh, yes, it is her. Why? She was persistent. She was determined to get an answer. And Jesus wants you to have that same type of persistence. He wants you to have that same type of faith. Come to him on a daily basis in faith, saying, Lord, I'm believing you to make such and such a thing happen for me. And Jesus said, verse 6, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Did you hear what this unjust, wicked judge say who didn't, who, who didn't fear God nor regard man? Jesus said, and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Jesus is saying, if a wicked, unjust judge can grant a woman's request, how much more your heavenly father who loves you and cares about you. But then he, he asked a question in verse eight. He said, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. He will avenge them speedily. There comes a time when God does answer the prayer. Jesus said he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He's talking about the kind of faith this woman have. The, the faith that refused to take no for an answer. The faith 
state that refuses to easily quit or give up because you don't see the prayer answered in the first four weeks. Some of you get mad and say, I'm done with praying that prayer. I know what it is to pray the same prayer every day for months and even years. And guess what? Those prayers are being answered. I mean, one after the other, those prayers are being answered. Are you listening to me? It's not an overnight thing. God knows exactly what he is doing in your life, but you got to hang in there. Pray until the answer come. That woman knocked and kept on knocking. She asked and kept on asking. She seek and keep on seeking until she got the prayer answered. She got her request granted to her. And Jesus said, if a wicked judge can grant a woman's request, how much more your God who loves you and cares about you. Oh, he's going to answer your prayer. He is going to answer your prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, me and Pastor Amy, we lift your people up before you on this morning, especially those who are worn and weary and had given up. Stir their faith this morning. Stir their faith in the name of Jesus that they just need to keep on praying because the answer will come in the name of Jesus. The answer will come. The answer will come. The answer will come in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Listen, on this morning, I want to give someone an opportunity to give their hearts to the Lord Jesus, to give your life to him. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He loves you this morning. And without any hesitation, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross for me. They buried you in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. From this day, I surrender my life to you. From this day, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me and meant it with all of your hearts, let me and Pastor Amy be the first to say to you, welcome into the family of God. Welcome into God's family. Your sins are have been forgiven. You are now a child of God. I want you to type below this video right now. I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. You are a child of God. Wash in his blood. The old chapter is closed and today marks a day of a new beginning in your life. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. I want you to type below this video right now. I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. We created a booklet for you. It's called First Steps in a New Direction. We encourage you to scan the QR code and download that booklet. We talk about the importance of prayer in there. Prayer is simply talking to God. Every time you talk to him, pour your heart out to him. And you end that prayer by saying, in Jesus' name I pray. We also encourage you to read the Bible, beginning with the gospel of the book of John. And we encourage you to download our ministry app. We have several free translations of the Bible. We encourage you to begin in the gospel of John because reading the word of God is your spiritual food, just like what milk does to a new baby. That's what the word of God does to you spiritually. It causes you to grow causes you to understand God, the things of God, how he operates, how he answers our prayer. If you live in the DFW area, we invite you to be a part of our Miracle Healing Center Church family here in the city of McKinney, Texas. 
we meet at Cockrell Middle School Sundays at 10 a.m., 1351 South Harden Boulevard, McKinney, Texas, 75071. We'd love to have you a part of our local family. I'm asking 300 of you who have never partnered with this ministry or never done something significant. And you know this ministry has been a blessing to millions of you around the world. I'm asking 300 people to make a commitment for the next 12 months to stand with this ministry. And I'm asking you to do something significant to help us continue to preach this gospel around the world. We want to begin three nights of miracles in a few months, but we cannot accomplish this by ourselves. We need you to stand with us financially. We need you to make a commitment for the next 12 months to do something significant. And people, this is not a joke. This is not a game. I'm very serious about this. If you know you are able to do it and you can make that commitment for the next 12 months, I want you to do something significant for the next 12 months to help us do what God is calling us to do. You know me and Pastor Amy, we take these things very serious. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry Cash App account. The ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Listen, Maine Past Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.